Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi and the special 20,000 subscribers Q&A video. Now I didn't think I would get to 20,000 subscribers this quickly but it's just sort of happened. So thanks to everybody who subscribes to Toy Poloi and thanks to everybody who watches and comments on my videos. It's really great that uh, you're all so interested in restoring vintage old toys and take the time to take part in this channel. Now over the last few weeks I've asked uh, people to submit questions for me to answer in a Q&A video and today I'm going to get on with those. I've got a whole pile of uh, paperwork here which is all the questions that I've received and I'll try and answer as many as I can in this video. So let's get straight on with it and we'll get to the first question. I think it has to be the other way around. The TV and films would influence the toys that I'd want because uh, I'd see a movie or I'd see a TV show and I'd want to have a toy to play with it. And if there wasn't a toy, then I'd make something. I remember really loving Airwolf and there wasn't a toy for Airwolf. Or I couldn't find one. So I just made Airwolf out of Lego. And the same thing happened when Ghostbusters came out. I love Ghostbusters and I didn't see any toys that I could buy for Ghostbusters. So my Murdoch from the A-Team got made into a Ghostbusters. I made a new jacket for him and a sort of backpack. And he was one of the Ghostbusters. So really TV and film influenced the way I play with toys and what I wanted from toys. So my favourite toy as a child has to be the uh, Fisher-Price Frogman. Uh, this was one of the toys that uh, I remember getting. I don't think I had that many Fisher-Price uh, sort of toys as a child, but I had this one and it went everywhere with me for at least a year. Every time I went to the beach or sort of went playing anywhere, this figure came along and it ended up getting really battered and worn. This isn't my childhood one. Uh, this is one I picked up recently because I have no idea what happened to uh, my childhood one. But uh, my childhood one was really well loved. I don't think there was any paint left on it. All of the little markings had been uh, removed because it had been played with so much but uh, that was certainly a toy I absolutely loved growing up. The best figure has to be the uh, Biker Scout because it's just a fantastic sculpt and it was a figure that I absolutely loved as a child and I still love them today. I think I've got about 20 of them now and uh, just a fantastic sculpt. Worst figures has to be a lot of the last 17 figures. I'm not a fan of those. I think the uh, Han Solo in Carbonite is probably the worst figure. It just looks awful with his massive shoulders and tiny little head. I'm also not a fan of a Man of Man. I think that's a pretty average figure. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the line. So uh, yeah, best definitely Biker Scout. Worst definitely Han in Carbonite. And then a lot of the last 17 are just very, very average. Toy collecting has certainly changed over the years. eBay has made things easier, but also harder. In the early days of eBay, it was very good for picking up toys because people were just listing stuff and didn't really know what they want. But now people are much more savvy with prices. So when they list things on eBay, the prices tend to be high. But that doesn't mean you can't get a bargain still. It's just a lot harder to find them and a lot more hunting goes on. But I like that. I like the challenge of sort of searching around just to see what I can find. But certainly toy collecting when I started was a really easy thing to do. You could go anywhere and sort of pick up cheap toys, especially at uh, sort of car boot sales and in charity shops. Now, just because everyone's much more aware that toys are collectible, the prices are going up and up. But it's still fun and you can still find cheap things if you sort of persevere and hunt for them. I do collect some Action Force. I've actually got a growing Action Force Red Shadows army. So at some point I will cover restoring those because a lot of the ones I've been picking up are in a terrible state. So yeah, Action Force is something that will certainly appear on this channel in the future. It has to be Star Wars and Action Man. They're my two favourite lines for restoring Star Wars just because it's always popular and I love Star Wars vehicles and figures so it's a really nice one for me to do and I get enjoyment out of fixing them up. And Action Man as well is a sort of recent thing I've got back into. They're lovely toys to fix. They're easy to take apart and easy to work with and it's still relatively easy to get parts for them and nothing costs that much. So if you're doing an Action Man restoration it's quite a sort of easy one to do. Probably the hardest ones I find to uh, restore are the uh, Cyborgs figures made by Dennis Fisher and uh, Strawberry Fair just because parts are so hard to find. I've been collecting those for a good few years now and I've only got one complete figure in that time and that cost me quite a bit. You occasionally find odd parts for them but it really is a struggle. So restoring those just because it's so hard to find parts makes them a much more difficult toy to work with. That 
that's a very good question and one I was asked when I was on the, the TV show Collectorholics. I have no idea. I've never really counted. I know sort of about some of the collection I have, how many figures I have in those, like my Imperial Army here. I know there's 181 figures in it, but for the rest of it, I've really got no clue. I've got a just figures sort of piled up everywhere on all of my shelves and I've never bothered to count it. It's probably something I should do at some point but I just can't face sitting down and working out uh, what I've got so no idea really. I still have a few grail items. Every once in a while I'll find one. I've picked up a couple recently, but one toy that I've been wanting for years, and I really should just go out and buy one, is a uh, Starbird by MB, which is the sort of space toy that you could fly around. It would make noises as you lifted it up and down. I've always wanted one of those. I remember a, ch a friend of mine at school had one. I was desperate to have one. I never did, and I still want one today. So it's a many, many years of wanting one. I just don't have it. So at some point I would love to get myself a Starbird. The chips figures will get fixed at some point. I'm still currently hunting down parts for them. I managed to get a few bits. I've got a few more sort of pieces like belts and boots and uh, helmets for them, but I'm still hunting for more parts. So they haven't been forgotten. I have some more Mego dolls that I'd like to restore in future. It's just a case of waiting till I find parts. And as I've said many times before, finding parts does take time and there's no point in sort of rushing these things. So you have to have a lot of patience when fixing toys. And that's what's happening with the chips dolls. They just need parts. I think I've always loved toys really but it was probably in my sort of early 20s when I first got a job and had some money to spend and I got back into sort of collecting them and got into sort of collecting them seriously. I remember I went to a car boot sale and I picked up an ATST and a biker scout very cheaply and those were the first sort of bits that I picked up in my older life I suppose and not a child who was play with toys but as a sort of adult and that was the sort of starting point for my collection so that's now about 25 years ago and uh, I'm still collecting so it's just a hobby that I love and will carry on for as long as I possibly can. I don't think I've ever given up on a project. I've certainly paused projects for a long time. Sometimes things take ages to work out, like working out how to fix the TIE Fighter clips. That took me about 15 years. So it was a pause rather than a give up. And I have projects here that I would still want to work on that I'm just sort of thinking about them or it will, something will come to me at some point or I'll see an item that I think will work to fix that toy. So I've never actually given up on a fix. I'm just waiting to find the right part. So hopefully I can fix everything given enough time. I probably have two collections that are nearing completion. One is obviously Star Wars figures, as you can see here. I'm only missing one, which is the blue snag or two. So if I get that, then that whole set of figures is complete. The other one is my Fisher Price Adventure People uh, figure collection. I'm not collecting the vehicles on that, just the figures. And there's only about 70 of them to collect. So far, I think I have about 40, so only 30 to go. And they should be quite easy to get because it's a fairly easy uh, sort of collection to complete. Otherwise, all the other toys I collect, I just collect bits of them because they're so many toys and lines I cannot possibly collect every single thing. Now I did ask Mrs Toy Ploy to appear here on the film but she really doesn't want to appear ever so uh, I've asked her the question and she says the toys that she loved most are Pippa by Palatoy and I've shown you a few of those on this line and she also likes the uh, Playmobil and Play People so those are her favourite toys as a child. That's a great question. What has drawn people to this channel? Well, I think it's just the love of fixing old toys. And there didn't seem to be a lot of people showing how to do it when I first started up Toy Ploy. So over the years, people have been drawn to me and seen what I've been able to do and what you can do and what toys can be fixed. So I think it's really just that that has got all these people subscribed to this channel. And it's great. I like to help people and I try and show people as much as I can about fixing toys because I don't believe any toy should be given up on and thrown away. So uh, I think it's really just the love of old toys and saving old toys that's put everybody here. And I hope many more people find Toy Ploy and can join in with restoring their old toys and sort of just bringing a bit of love back to things that they played with as children. Yeah, 
yes, I bought loads of toys and then sold them and thought, why did I sell them? And sometimes I rebuy them and other times I'm still hunting for them. I sold one of my Transformers a good few years back when I was having a sort of clear out and trying to sort of reduce my Transformers collection, which was my childhood version of Run Amok. And I deeply regret doing it and only recently at a toy fair I managed to pick myself up another one now this isn't my childhood one but it's as close as I'm going to get so I do really regret selling that off also I had some lovely Fraggle Rock toys when Fraggle Rock is something I don't watch anymore I haven't watched it in years but I had the little wind up doozers I had a full set of them and I sold them and I don't know why I did it because I regret it every day I think why did I sell them and now I've tried to sort of pick them up again and they're so expensive I've just not bothered so yes I bought lots of toys over the years and I've regretted selling quite a few of them which is why my collection is quite as large as it is now because I can't part with some of these because I really think I will regret it if I do. Toy Ploy really all started because of uh, James from the X Robots YouTube channel. He came over one day and saw that I was uh, sort of fixing and mending the toys that I had in my collection and said, why don't I start a YouTube channel and show people how I do it? And so I sort of ummed and ahed for a bit and decided that I would give it a go. And now four and a half years later, I'm still here, still fixing toys and still showing people how to mend them. So uh, really Toy Ploy started because of James from X Robots. I'm always looking to do more Star Wars restorations and sort of customs. It's really just about finding the ships now. There's a couple of ships I do want to cover. Uh, the biggest one is probably the Jawa Soundcrawler, but it's a toy I've never actually seen in the flesh. I've never seen one here in the UK. So uh, if I do, I'll certainly snap that up because it looks like there's a lot of space inside that is pretty blank and empty. And there's certainly uh, scope for putting new artwork inside it and maybe some lights. So uh, yeah, I'm always looking for other ships to work on. So if you have suggestions, drop me a line. I'm not that much of a boxed toy collector. I do pick up the odd thing if it's boxed, but mainly all the stuff I collect is loose. So I don't really have any sort of items that I particularly want to get boxed because I find I just can't play with them. I like to play with the toys I get. And if it's in a box and sort of sealed, you don't really want to open it. And uh, so for me, I try to get them all loose uh, or figures all loose and vehicles all loose so that I can at least sort of play with them and sort of pose them around. So there isn't any particular boxed item I'm after at the moment. Well, I haven't done a uh, sort of toy tour for a long time because really the answer to that is I manage my collection quite badly. It's all over the place because I'm filming in this room as well. Stuff just tends to get piled up. So I have some bits nicely displayed and a lot of the rest of it is actually just on the floor down here, which you can't see off camera. So ideally I'd get a bigger room that I could display all of my stuff in. But uh, as it stands, it's a bit of a mess. I try to rotate my uh, display every once in a while. So some things will get packed away and I'll put other things out on display. But as I'm sure many collectors know, you can't display everything. So some of my stuff is boxed up in the loft, uh, but I do sort of rotate it around so I get to, to appreciate it every once in a while. But uh, with filming here, it does tend to get a little bit on the messy side. So this is actually the neatest side of the room because I don't film this side very often. The side I film, there's lots of bits of projects piled up on the floor and in various boxes so hopefully one day I'll get a bigger space that I can uh, display it all very neatly. That honour goes to uh, this Action Man, which was one that I restored recently. He'd been fully painted red and restoring him was uh, a real challenge. When I picked him up, I really wasn't sure whether anything could be done to fix him. But as I sort of showed in the video, with a lot of work, I was able to get him looking pretty decent. And um, so that's a challenge that I really wasn't sure whether I could actually do anything with him at the start, but I just wanted to have a go. Uh, sometimes I pick things up just to see if I can fix them. And I think nine times out of 10, I have done sort of reasonable jobs on them. Some things I've not shown on this channel just because they haven't worked particularly well, or I'm not really happy with the end result. So they are things that I'll come back to in future if I can think of a better way of doing it. But this guy certainly was the biggest challenge I've done to date. The only people who ever seem to have trouble with restorations are the sort of hardcore Star Wars collectors. And I sort of understand what they're going on about because uh, Star Wars figures and Star Wars vehicles do sell for a premium. But really, 
the stuff I restore is the bottom end of the market, the things that have really broken and damaged. And even when they're restored, you can tell that they sort of had things done to them because they're not mint figures. And for me, toy collecting is not about the money. I collect toys because I really enjoy them and want to have them in my collection and be able to sort of play with them again and do stuff, sort of just muck around with them. So I don't buy the expensive items that these sort of collectors do. So as far as destroying a market or ruining a market, I don't think what I do does. I'm helping people who have a similar idea to me and want to just sort of restore their childhood toys. So I think the videos I make have a positive effect on collecting because they're really aimed at people who are just trying to restore and repair the toys they had as children and want to get back into a sort of nice state. The high-end collectors seem to worry about absolutely everything uh, that goes on within their communities and that's fine, I'll leave them to it. For me, I just want to restore old battered toys and make them look Look as good as I possibly can. There are two main things that you have to have as a toy restorer in your sort of box of bits. Plastic nippers is one because you always need to sort of trim bits of plastic and then a little pot of uh, bits of Lego just because Lego is such a useful sort of a component. You can cut it and shape it into lots of things. So uh, without plastic nippers and Lego, a lot of the toys I've got here wouldn't be in the state they are in today. I go to Japan just for a holiday really, but uh, over the years I've met quite a lot of people there and other toy collectors. So I now go and visit lots of different little toy shops all around uh, sort of the Tokyo area and have friends who collect toys there. So it's still a holiday, but I also get to do a lot of toy hunting and toy sort of purchasing while I'm there. So that's it for the 20,000 subs Q&A video. I've tried to answer as many questions as I can. If I didn't answer your question, I'm really sorry, but uh, keep on sending questions in because at some point there will be a 30,000 subscribers Q&A video. And I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who sort of talks to me and comments on these videos and chats with me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. It's really nice to be able to chat to other toy collectors all around the world. And thanks for all your suggestions on things that I should fix. Uh, these suggestions, I do keep a note of pretty much everything people ask for. So hopefully at some point I will fix or do a video on every time I've been asked about so uh, just keep on watching and thanks for enjoying and thanks for being part of Toy Poloi. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.